For today's agenda, this is what I'll be speaking about, starting with an intro about myself and my company. We will then talk about innovation and how marketing fuels the success of new products and services in emerging industries. I will talk about AI and its use cases, blockchain and its use cases, and throughout the talk, its relevance to marketing. Sounds good? I hope so. So you must be wondering who I am and who this voice belongs to. I've had a global marketing career within corporate organizations such as American Express, Qantas Airways, and Here Technologies. I've lived and worked in five countries in four continents, including Australia, Canada, Taiwan, Japan, and the UK. And for the past three years, I am the founder and chief marketing officer of my own marketing consultancy called Forestlin. I'm passionate about emerging technologies, and we specialize in marketing and communications for growth and scaling of emerging tech products and services. Our list of clients have been big corporates like Kaspersky Cybersecurity, universities such as the University of New South Wales, who's a top supplier of STEM students to the nation, and many medium and startup clients within AI, data, blockchain, cryptocurrency, robotics, AR, VR, smart cities, and the fintech space. So our purpose is really simple. We love innovation by connecting and we are change agents for innovation by connecting fantastic problem solving ideas with smart people and experts in their space. And we assist to amplify their ideas with even better marketing to grow and scale to the mass market. For more information, do visit forestlin.com. So I have this term called innovation marketing. This is when we understand that marketing is all about knowing your customers. And it isn't just about spending your entire marketing budget on ads. And in fact, I'm here to really change that perception. So if you have intimate knowledge about your customer, it will lead to increased customer numbers, will lead to increased growth. With increased growth, it would lead to increased revenue. It's crucial to remember that innovation has marketing as a core function and to enable any product or service success. This is very important. According to Nielsen, 80 to 85% of all new products fail. So let's explore some of the major factors and top reasons to why this is. Not knowing your customers. Number one, a lot of organizations and founders have limited knowledge of their, of their target customers. They just don't spend enough time to fully deep dive and understand them, their needs, and how they actually interact with products or service. A lot of companies build things that isn't fit for a relevant audience, and that is a major issue. Two, jargon-filled communications. Technical people tend to communicate in technical and jargon-filled terms that no one except for other technical people will understand. Many teams, organizations, and founders struggle to communicate a message in simple and easily digestible language that resonates and is relevant to their customers and target audiences. And number three factor, unfortunately, a lot of businesses take too long to change, pivot, or even make decisions. This inaction could be paralyzing as the market, industry, or their customers can move away and you're left behind in the dust. This is especially current during our current times in coronavirus times. Having an agile mindset and to be comfortable with change and to constantly adapt is vital for products and services in the emerging tech space, or they will fall within this failed 80 to 85% statistic as well. A bit of a case study of, an ex of a company not changing with the times is Kodak. Did you know that Kodak 
invented the digital camera in 1975, but with the fear they are cannibalizing their own, the most profitable item being the film cartridges, they stayed their current course. They stayed their course. In a story published by the New York Times, management's reaction to a filmless camera invention to the inventing engineer was, that's cute, but don't tell anybody about it. Kodak is now a bankrupt company as they did not innovate and alter with the changing needs of their customers. And ultimately, the industry and competition not only caught up with them, but overtook them completely, rendering that no company is ever safe if they are not innovative. So let's talk about AI and business. New emerging technologies bring new disruption to business. Artificial intelligence is a discipline of computer science where machine has the capability to imitate intelligent human behavior. Essentially, AI is all based on utilizing data. Machine learning is a subset of AI. And why is this a big deal? It is because PwC estimates that technologies birthed by artificial intelligence could raise the world's GDP by 14% and valuing it at 15.7 trillion by 2030. That's trillion with a T. So this is a very big game changer. So we already use a lot of artificial intelligence in a lot of our marketing campaigns as well as company operational functions. Here are some of the most popular and interesting ones that is making our consumer experiences more enjoyable and efficient. Have you used the Albert Einstein conversational chatbot yet? National Geographic had a TV series called Genius about Albert Einstein starring Jeffrey Rush. This is a conversational chatbot on Facebook Messenger where users can ask questions and they will receive an Einstein-like answer, which was a highly successful, engaging and educational campaign. These days, conversational chatbots are heavily used by companies of all sizes as an effective customer service tool. Wondering why you sat on the couch for one hour and then you end up spending all day and night on the couch? This is because algorithms on Netflix and YouTube that uses AI and machine learning to recommend content to you based on what you've previously watched. And then you end up going on a personalized recommendation rabbit hole for hours and even days. The recommendations are based on items that you have already watched and recommend like-minded content that is relevant for you. Spotify uses it to play you songs and artists similar to the ones already on your playlist. And Amazon does it really well to make you buy an extra 10 items in your shopping cart that you probably don't need. As for me, you'll find me sitting on my couch on a continuous The Crown and, family, and Royal Families rabbit hole loop. So back when we can all travel freely before COVID-19, Airbnb will service dynamic pricing recommendations based on previous bookings and knowing just how much they think we can afford on accommodation. So for example, take a look at this picture and you'll see that both places are exactly the same. But the one on the left is double the price than the one on the right because of who is accessing this information. Dynamic pricing, personalized pricing is used in many travel sites by hotels and airlines all based on the knowledge and the data collected about the customer, their affordability and how much they think you are willing and able to pay. Let's talk about deep fake technology. Here is an example of what it is, how it is made and how real it looks from the famous Spanish surreal artist, Salvador Dali. So what I'm gonna do now is to share a video 
um, about what tech, tech, deep tech is and how it works. So just excuse me while I excuse out of, uh, I'll get out of my presentation. And I'm just gonna put on YouTube. Okay, so back to that. Um, hopefully, and you can see the video. Um, I, it said that there's no sound, which is unfortunate, but there is um, there is some static that you see. So hopefully, that's uh, so. There was some text on the slide, so hopefully you can see that instead. So back to the presentation. Oops. Knowing that Salvador Dali, so what you could see, I know that there wasn't any sound according to some of the feedback. Thank you so much. Um, but what you could hear is Salvador Dali's voice. And um, and what you could see in that video was that you could see him talking and he was, it was basically using an actor and using um, technology to render that, to make him come back to life. And then also manipulating his voice to make him, look like is completely real and it's it's in real life what it could also do is it was actually placed in the salvador dali museum in florida and it welcomes all these new visitors that comes into the museum and so you can actually press on different languages so if you come in um, and you want to hear english you can hear in english salvador dali if you want to come in and speak spanish you could see a spanish salvador dali or if you want to hear french you can hear a French Salvador Dali, he's probably even speaking Chinese and Japanese as well, which is all pretty interesting. But really the question is like, can we also trust what we see online anymore if we use deep, take, deep fake technology and we can manipulate anyone to say anything? And it could be really hard to tell, I think, to, to see if it's real or not. Um, so whilst I think this is incredibly engaging, which I truly believe it is, but Salvador Dali actually died in 1989. And some of these questions around, around robotic, um, sorry, about ethics can come into play because you can put any words on him or anyone to make it look really real. And this certainly is definitely a darker conundrum as we face this technology. It can be used for good, but it could also be used for not so good. So I'm just gonna go back into um, full screen mode. So to solve the issue of trust and resource trustworthiness, this is potentially where another type of technology, blockchain technology, could be used as a possible solution. Here is an extremely high level definition of what blockchain technology is. Blockchain uh, one form of distributed ledger technology. So it's like a database. A blockchain is distributed across and managed by peer-to-peer -peer networks, meaning it's decentralized. Data on a blockchain is grouped together and organized in blocks. The blocks are then linked to one or another and secured using a form of security and encryption called cryptography. So meaning that Blockchain is essentially an ever continuously growing list of records in an ever growing database. That's a very high level definition. And as a result, the three main benefits of blockchain technology are one is decentralization. Data is not stored. So in just one location, and when it's not stored in one location, it's just, it's decentralized, meaning that it actually increases security. Secondly, transparency. Anyone who is able to publicly 
access and see and verify this information as everything is publicly available in public ledgers. So you can't do creative accounting, for example, anymore. And three, immutability. Because of its append-only structure, data can only be added to the database. Altering or deleting previously entered data on earlier blocks is impossible, meaning that it's resistant to modification of data and it will always be a source of truth. So when we talk about trust, we should be thinking and be more aware about what we're putting into our mouths and where food has come from. So let's use blockchain in a supply chain perspective. So in this example, do we really know if this steak that we're eating is from Argentina or if the wine that we're drinking is actually from France? Food's journey from farm to table involves numerous transactions between different people and companies. What if we could simplify this process, enabling transactions to be shared securely and efficiently among every supplier in the supply chain? As an example of this is IBM Food Trust, which uses blockchain technology to create visibility and accountability in the food supply chain. It connects growers, processors, distributors, and retailers through a permissioned, permanent, and shared record of food system data. By knowing every single proof point and proof of data, this means that we're able to increase our food safety and able to trace contaminated products much quicker, gain visibility to supply chain data to improve freshness, and even increase shelf life and identify inefficiencies and ensuring the quality of food and goods across the entire supply chain. Another great example of the use of supply chain is provenance. Because blockchain is able to prove the source of truth, the traceability and provenance of diamonds, artworks and antiques is now possible. De Beers is leading the diamond traceability movement in finding out where diamonds are found, ensuring that conflict diamonds do not enter its supply chain and in eliminating the production of illegal blood diamonds. By using blockchain technology, authenticity of original ownership can now be improved, sustained value of goods can now be confirmed, and ultimately it may also eliminate forgeries and counterfeit products. Forrester states that as much as 56% of all display ad dollars were lost to fraudulent inventory because of the lack of transparency in the current advertising exchange. If we use blockchain technology and marketing, I believe that one, advertising spends will become a lot more transparent and brands will have better oversight. Two, it will change how we use influencers in marketing as the number of Followers will finally be a real count and not, not just filled with bots and fake accounts. Three, publishers will become more accountable as transactions become even more transparent and advertisers can see exactly where the traffic is going and marketers will no longer solely accept measuring impressions. Blockchain technology will unveil all activities, decreasing fraud and increasing attribution. Four, Decentralization will remove the media mi middleman and transactions that take place between the buyer and seller in self-executing contracts called smart contracts will ensure that making payments to suppliers and vendors will be easier, more efficient and automatic. And finally, by providing complete control to the user regarding their personal information will appease privacy concerns from the user's perspective and promote social responsibility from the advertiser side, allevi alleviating privacy concerns and increasing user trust. So more about how innovation such as AI and blockchain can drive and fuel marketing success. And if you're interested to learn more, we are innovation marketing specialists and we can help you and your organization if you have new innovative product or service and need a strong go-to-market strategy. Additionally, we're also AI and blockchain marketing experts. If you need assistance to supercharge your innovation, 
we can also help you implement and educate AI and blockchain solutions into your company operations and marketing campaigns. So thank you so much for listening and I hope to connect with you so we can continue to build more networks and grow this global movement. The best way to, con to connect with me is LinkedIn. Simply search for my name, Lucy Lin, or my Twitter handle is Lucy Lin 007, because I'm a Bond fan, <laughs> or else you can email me at, luc at lucy at forestland.com or visit my company's website, forestland.com. So I'm going to get out of my presentation and just back onto me now. Okay, hopefully you can see me again. Great. So I just wanted to say it was fantastic to present and an absolute honor to be part of women in blockchain movement, especially during this time when the world is really crying out loud for more diversity and inclusion, consisting of genders, races, sexual orientation and abilities more than ever in all facets of our society and our work life. I truly believe that we will all need to work better together when there is a more diverse collection of thinking. And this is why it's so important to get more women into tech, and especially within emerging technologies like AI and blockchain industries, when we see even more gender imbalances figures. Thank you so much again. I hope you have enjoyed my speech and topic, and I really look forward to connecting with you. So you can search for me or my company on social media. Have a wonderful rest of the day, and I hope you have a great rest of the conference. Thank you very much. And I'm just going to quickly type in um, my contact details within the chat so you've got that. And um, two seconds. There you go. This is my contact details. I've just said this is my contact details feel free to contact me and I look forward to connecting with you thank you very much and have a great rest of the day and conference